I'm always trying to track down the truth behind many conspiracy theories surrounding 9-11. Today's episode of Off the Grid is meant to get to the truth about who funded and supported the 9-11 hijackers. You won't hear any speculation today, just the facts. And you'll hear them from my guest, Senator Bob Graham. He's a former two-term governor and former three-term senator for the state of Florida. He was co-chair of the Joint Congressional Inquiry into 9-11. He co-wrote the Congressional Report on 9-11, and he knows classified information about who financed the attacks. Senator Graham has always wanted to see 9-11 reopened and reinvestigated so that the American people can finally get an answer on who financed it and who supported it. It's an honor to welcome Senator Bob Graham to Off the Grid. Thank you for joining us today, Senator. It's a great pleasure. Jesse, thank you very much. I appreciate the chance to tell the truth. Well, it's something we're lacking today. Now, you've been calling for the release. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, of the redacted 28 pages from the 9-11 Congressional Committee report, saying specifically it pertained to Saudi Arabia. Now, why should anything, aren't we the boss, Isn't, aren't we the taxpayers who pay the bill, allegedly the boss? How can they keep redacted pages from the, the people of the United States so that we can know the truth once and for all about 9-11 if there is a truth to know? Because the President of the United States uh, has the power uh, to classify and keep from the public uh, information that, in his judgment, uh, represents some form of a national security threat. I believe that the essential unanswered question from 9-11 is whether the 19 hijackers acted alone, which is the official position of the United States government, or whether they had a support network that facilitated their ability to remain anonymous, in some cases for almost two years, while they completed and practiced and then executed a very complicated plot. I think it is implausible to believe that 19 people, most of whom couldn't speak English, had never been in the United States before, could have carried out such a sophisticated plot as 9-11. Well, I've always maintained this too, Senator. This is what we were told, that 19 Islamic radicals armed with box cutters defeated our multi-billion dollar air defense system, all while conspiring with a bearded guy in a cave in Afghanistan. And that's what we were told and expected to believe. And I agree with you. I can't buy into that. There had to be schedules met. There had to be people with money that allowed all of this to happen. And why won't the president, what possible, why wouldn't he allow the American people to see the truth? What, what is it that we can't take about the truth? It was easier to answer that question uh, during the administration of President Bush, uh, where uh, oil would have been a factor, a long time family relationship between the Bush family and the House of Saud would have been a factor. The relationship that is, was established between the United States and Saudi Arabia during World War II, in which we committed ourselves to the defense of Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia committed to provide us with a reliable source of petroleum. It's more difficult to answer that question now uh, with the Obama administration, particularly more than six years into the Obama administration, uh, as to why the withholding of this information. And it's not just the 28 pages. They may be the best known, but there are many other pieces of information that would shed light on whether there was a network of support. If so, where did it come from and what did it do uh, than just the 28 pages? Now, Senator, those 28 pages and the additional pages, they're all paid for by our tax dollars, aren't they? Uh, I was co-chairman of the Congressional Inquiry, and we got a check every two weeks, and uh, it uh, was signed by Uncle Sam. Well, then don't we have a right to know? Don't the people of America have a right to know if it was our tax dollars that paid for this investigation 
then we have the right to read it its an entirety, not just portions of it, not where they, you know, decide what we can read. Jesse, I accept the fact that there are some things that are a legitimate national security uh, uh, issue and ju justify uh, being withheld. This is not one of those. I was involved in writing these 28 pages. I, at least 13 years ago, uh, had a very precise knowledge of what was in them. And at that time, when, when they were first classified, I said, as did my Republican counterpart, Senator Selby of Alabama, there was no reason why those 28 pages should be withheld from the American people. And if that was true uh, in July of 2003, when the original decision was made, it's even truer today uh, in May of 2015. Now, Senator, why, why does the Obama administration stand up for this? Why, why won't they allow it to, to become public? What's their dog in the fight? I've never heard a public statement from the Obama administration as to why they are doing this. My suspicion is it has to do with the general turmoil uh, in the Middle East and the concern that if Saudi Arabia uh, were to be outed, uh, that its actions around 9-11 would become publicly known, that it would add further uh, disruption to the Middle East. If that is the rationale, uh, I do not consider it to be a sufficient one uh, and, and one which, in fact, protects our national security, uh, because I think the message that the Saudis have received by our unwillingness to invoke any sanction against the, their support for the 9-11 hijackers has been to encourage Saudi Arabia to be involved in more of the same. They've continued to fund al-Qaeda. They were a significant part of the establishment of ISIS. Uh, they have supported madrasas, which treat, uh, teach young people hatred and intolerance of mosques, which preach jihad uh, to adults. Uh, all those things have happened after 9-11, in large part, in my opinion, because there was, there's no sanction for 9-11. What, what do they have to do uh, to incur the wrath of the United States. If the Saudis are guilty of what this alleges they did, isn't that a declaration of war on us? Well, I guess the answer is it would be within my definition of what is a declaration of war. Uh, but what I'm suggesting is that would be a step down the road. Let's just let the American people, intelligent, thoughtful people as they are, uh, have access to this information. With that, they can form an opinion. Uh, were the Saudis uh, involved in facilitating 9-11? Uh, and if so, what should we do about it? Right now, we can't have that discussion because the only people who have access to the information are the people in a very narrow band of the administration and the intelligence community, uh, and they're not going to call for any significant changes uh, without strong motivation from the American people to do so. Now, Senator, you, you're also involved in this strange case of this family in Florida, is that correct, that seemed to have some sort of involvement and mysteriously disappeared out of the state of Florida two weeks before 9-11 occurred? Fill us in on that. Yeah, uh, and Jesse, th this is an issue which didn't become publicly known until 10 years after 9-11. The basic facts are there was a very prominent, close to the royal family, Saudi family, uh, a grandfather, daughter, and son-in-law, and grandchildren living in a home in Sarasota, Florida. Three of the hijackers, including Mohammed Atta, uh, were doing their flight training uh, near Sarasota, and there was uh, evidence that uh, those hijackers had significant contacts and connections with that Saudi family. Uh, and then, as you stated, just a few days before 9-11, under what were described as urgent conditions, a new car left sitting in the front uh, yard, uh, food on the table, dirty clothes in the washer, the family, after six years living in Sarasota, fled back to Saudi Arabia. 
uh, that family, to my knowledge, has never been uh, interrogated as to why they did that. Uh, but it certainly raises uh, a, a strong suspicion that somebody tipped them off to what was about to happen and that they would be better off in Saudi Arabia than in the United States uh, when it occurred. Let's go to the families, uh, the people who lost loved ones at 9-11. They've brought lawsuits and all that stuff. They're being blocked from likewise seeing these 28 pages, aren't they? Yes, uh, they're also being blocked by the Saudis' use of the concept of sovereign immunity. That's the principle that goes back hundreds of years that the king can do no wrong, therefore you can't sue the king. And whenever this group of some 6,000 sons, daughters, husbands, wives uh, of the 3,000 Americans who were killed at 9-11 uh, have tried to press their case that Saudi Arabia was a co-conspirator and therefore should be held accountable uh, for those deaths, uh, they've been thrown out of court uh, because Saudi Arabia has said, we're uh, subject to sovereign immunity, you can't sue us. Well, finally, a federal court uh, has agreed that, yes, victims of a foreign state promoting terrorism uh, do have the right to access to a federal court uh, to get justice. Now what the families need are more of the facts that will substantiate the relationship between Saudi Arabia and the hijackers, and these 28 pages and other withheld documents would go a long way towards their ability to, to confirm that there was a support network and that the Saudis were at the heart of it. And shouldn't our government be in support of these families instead of opposing them? Absolutely. And in fact, you're right. At every step of the way, uh, the United States government, your government, to which you pay taxes, uh, has been supporting the Saudis, urging the courts uh, to throw the case uh, out. Uh, I think a large part of that is that our government uh, has a similar interest to Saudi Arabia in not allowing the full facts to be made known. And they understand that if this court case uh, continues and, it, and is not arbitrarily dismissed, uh, there's going to be a lot of evidence that will be unearthed, uh, which will be very uh, embarrassing to the United States and, uh, and con condemning uh, of Saudi Arabia. How can we look at our country, the fabric of our country, and believe in America if we're sitting on such a feeble house of cards as this, Senator Graham? We have to have the truth. Otherwise, how can anyone have any belief in us? Well, Jesse, this is one of those cases in which there's something that uh, all Americans can do that will move this towards justice. Uh, there are a number of members of the United States House of Representatives uh, who have come together and introduced a resolution uh, to ask the president uh, to release the 28 pages. And I personally think that if the Congress were to pass that res resolution, it would be very difficult for any president uh, to reject uh, their request. So what I would ask uh, your viewers uh, would be to send a letter, an email, a telephone call to your member of Congress asking them to vote for Resolution 14, uh, the resolution that will ask the president uh, to let the American people see the truth of what has been done uh, in their name, uh, which thus far has been to give sanction and impunity uh, to Saudi Arabia uh, in spite of its actions uh, during 9-11. Well, you know, Senator, when you look at this it, it, from, a, from a purely ground level and our, and our government's behavior on this whole thing, it makes, I mean, it looks to me like the government acts more like the mafia protecting their secrets than an agency that's supposed to be protecting the American people. Well, I don't know if I'd go as far as you, but Jesse, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to arm wrestle you over how to define <laughs> this, but I think it is unconscionable uh, for the uh, American government now uh, for 13, 14 years uh, to have been covering up what I think was an absolutely uh, 
essential relationship. 9-11 would not have happened uh, but for the support that was given to the hijackers, which allowed them to stay in the United States undiscovered uh, and, and construct, practice, and execute such a complicated plan as 9-11 uh, became. Uh, and that for the American uh, people to be denied the information uh, is, to me, breaks the essential contract of every democracy. And that is that the American people give respect and, uh, and support to the American government, but the American government gives respect and dignity to the American people by treating them like adults, including their ability to handle difficult information. Because when I think back to 9-11, Senator, and I remember, too, the day after and the days right after 9-11, how we were all grounded on the ground. We couldn't get on any planes and fly anywhere, and yet prominent Saudi Arabians were flown by the president out of this country without yeah. being interrogated, without being interviewed at all about what happened. All these potential witnesses that may have known something were taken out of the country by our own government. How do they expect us not to think there's a conspiracy problem here? And add to that the fact that some of those roughly 145 to 150 people who were flown out were actually relatives of Osama bin Laden uh, who were in the United States. The flights uh, took place from Lexington, Kentucky. There was a flight. Uh, there been there were several smaller planes that brought people from around the country to that one central point. Why Lexington, Kentucky, and not Los Angeles or New York or Washington? Well, the answer was because early September is the date of horse sales uh, in Kentucky, and there were more prominent Saudis that in uh, Lexington attending those sales than any other place. So that was the most convenient place from which they could depart. No kidding. No kidding. No kidding that, 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 that more expensive horses were being sold in Kentucky. And th so that's why that's where the flight originated. That's yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Where do we go from here? What, what, what's the plan of attack? What, what, what do the American people need to do? Well, there are several plans of attack. One, I have uh, asked your viewers uh, to contact their congressman. If there was a flood of emails, letters, and phone calls into the offices of congressmen saying, uh, sign on for Resolution 14 and get the truth about 9-11, uh, that would be a significant uh, force to make it happen. Another is going to be in the court where uh, these, the families now have a more level playing field uh, and are uh, aggressively pursuing gathering the facts upon which they will make their case that the Saudis were essentially a co-conspirator. This case in Sarasota is now in another federal court uh, under a freedom of information request uh, where the, in the first round uh, which occurred uh, in uh, 2012, the FBI took the position, we can't respond to the, your request for more information because we don't have any information. A very good and tough federal judge didn't accept that, kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And you know what the FBI finally uh, came up with in answer uh, to give us the information that you gathered in the Sarasota investigation? 80,000 pages of documents uh, in that investigation and they originally said there were no documents in that. 80,000? So 80,000 pages. If those, all those 80,000 pages were to be released to the public, I'm certain that uh, in those pages, uh, there will be a lot more information about just who was this Saudi family, how close, what were the nature of their relationships, uh, what kind of financial transactions were they involved with that might have been seen as there being a conduit uh, to the three uh, hijackers. All of those and more uh, are uh, tied up in this massive amount of information which the FBI said didn't exist. I want to thank Senator Graham for his vigilance in pursuing justice 
for the families of 9-11. I encourage you, my viewers, to continue to stay vigilant by sharing this information with those who still believe the official story on 9-11. It's up to us to set the record straight. Sound off at the websites below and stay vigilant. To believe that 19 people, most of whom couldn't speak English, had never been in the United States before, could have carried out such a sophisticated plot as 9-11. Well, I've always maintained this too, Senator. This is what we were told, that 19 Islamic radicals armed with box cutters defeated our multi-billion dollar air defense system, all while conspiring with a bearded guy in a cave in Afghanistan. And that's what we were told and expected to believe. And I agree with you. I can't buy into that. There had to be schedules met. There had to be people with money that allowed all of this to happen. And uh, information that, in his judgment, uh, represents some form of a national security threat. I believe that the essential unanswered question from 9-11 is whether the 19 hijackers acted alone, which is the official position of the United States government, or whether they had a support network that facilitated their ability to remain anonymous, in some cases for almost two years, while they completed and practiced and then executed a very complicated plot. I think it is implausible. They, now, you've been calling for the release, <coughs> excuse me, of the redacted 28 pages from the 9-11 Congressional Committee report saying specifically it pertained to Saudi Arabia. Now, why should anything, aren't we the boss? Isn't, aren't we the taxpayers who pay the bill, allegedly the boss? How can they keep redacted pages from the, the people of the United States so that we can know the truth once and for all about 9-11 if there is a truth to know? Uh, because the President of the United States uh, has the power uh, to classify and keep from the public I'm always trying to track down the truth behind many conspiracy theories surrounding 9-11. Today's episode of Off the Grid is meant to get to the truth about who funded and supported the 9-11 hijackers. You won't hear any speculation today, just the facts. And you'll hear them from my guest, Senator Bob Graham. He's a former two-term governor and former three-term senator for the state of Florida. He was co-chair of the Joint Congressional Inquiry into 9-11. He co-wrote the congressional report on 9-11, and he knows classified information about who financed the attacks. Senator Graham has always wanted to see 9-11 reopened and reinvestigated so that the American people can finally get an answer on who financed it and who supported it. It's an honor to welcome Senator Bob Graham to Off the Grid. Thank you for joining us today, Senator. It's a great pleasure. Jesse, thank you very much. I appreciate the chance to tell the truth. Well, it's something we're lacking today.